Now, well, guys, how's she going today? So she's a little bit nicer out. It's supposed to be, uh, I guess, cooling down here in the next day or two, and for a couple days anyway. But I heard it was supposed to be one day that we were supposed to get 45. Um, if that's going to happen, I don't know. It kind of like needs to happen so we can like get on with spring here already. Because uh, I'm just a little bit sick and tired of all this white shit, you know. It's kind of annoying. So, <clears throat> yeah. Been, been still feeding the cow. If anyone's wondering about that, um, I've been thinking maybe I'll um, set the GoPro up on my hat. I'll flip my hat, my hat around. Um, so you guys can kind of get another shot of that. I was going to make a video on asking you guys if you guys wanted to see some more videos on my cows, but there's really, I guess, only so much I can show you guys. The bull is getting a little bit bigger. He is getting a little bit more, uh, a little bit more strength to him, too. So, he's still coming up to me every, every time I open the door, or the gate, or whatever the hell you want to call it. He, uh, if he's, doesn't matter if he's laying down or standing up, he's coming over. What the hell is that? Something hanging here already. I thought it was a spider. Stupid. Um, yeah, every time I open the gate, he's pretty much right there. Um, he's kind of wanting to, uh, take off like he wants to actually not stay with his mom he kind of wants to wander around a little bit more um which i don't i don't let him because i don't know how the mother would react she might get a little you know freaked out so i try to i keep him within the pen he wants to come out a little bit i'll let him come out a little bit like you know i'll let us i'll let him poke his head out of the gate there a little bit but you definitely have to keep an eye on him because then he'll wander off. Now you definitely have to keep the, that half door shut because if you don't, that's the first place he'll go straight out, and then the mother will start freaking out. Of course, the mother will probably just fall behind. I'm thinking probably another week, a little less than a week, then the. Then they should get to go out. My grandma wants to keep them in there an extra week or two just because of if it being so damn musty, muddy out. But I'm not raising them as pets. Okay, it's not what I'm doing. The bulls anyway. Um, the bulls, when they get to be about a year old, you know, then that's when we'll ship them out. And they'll be turned into meat, I guess. Whatever. Whatever they do with bulls. Um... Because we don't keep them. We only keep the females. And then if we get to have too many, then we'll sell them. But right now we haven't gotten to that point that we actually had to sell some heifers, sell some heifers as well. We were always able to keep them. So, But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah. So, yeah. But anyways, some, I know some people, some subscribers of mine, Told me what those um, those leash things were that somebody left on top of my mailbox. Um, I guess they're apparently so you can walk horses and cattle with them once they're trained, trained enough to do that. Um, he's stopping again. That's why he's checking something. Um, anyways. Um, well, that's not going to be, it'll be kind of a problem, but it's not going to be a major problem. The mother that I have now, I don't think she's ever going to get, like, tame enough to where I can walk up to her and pet her. She might, I mean, right now she's still, uh, still a little fighty. Um, but she, she might always be that way once she, her kid gets older. Um, so, I don't think she'll ever be the one that you can 
you'll be able to walk. You're you're definitely going to have to force her to go wherever you want her to go. And he's taking off now. So, and plus, usually, for right now, we we are thinking about. I don't think it'll be this summer. We kind of need need to do it this summer because last summer was a kind of it was tough. But I don't know. Um, we were thinking about um, expanding our our pastures. We stopped again into the neighbor's field, uh, which is the ex mayor. We were seeing. I was going to go to him and see if we could get permission to do that um, because the young guy doesn't want to cut it. He thinks it's a waste of time. And it really isn't. For the amount of bales we get off, it's not even worth touching. Well, for him anyway. For me, it'd be okay if I was cutting it because every bale counts. Because um, we actually, we actually are running out of hay right now. Um, I don't even know. I don't think we even have five left. So I think we're gonna probably end up going and having to get a couple more. I don't think we're gonna make it until because I mean, we still got another whole. Probably another month yet, or even two months before the grass will even start doing anything. And there's still a lot of snow on the ground, and it's not melting fast enough. So, but anyways, usually last summer we ran out of pasture grass because there's too many cows and not enough pasture. And then on top of that, it was kind of lack of rain. We didn't get rain when we should have gotten it. We kind of got it. You know, we went easily a month or two without rain and then it, when it did rain it was just a spit it wasn't doing anything so we were kind of running out of pasture um i think we are going to go back up on top of the dike again like we did the years before it's just that we need to fence off the pond because I, we think that's how we lost our last cow or one of our cows we think that she fell in the pond broke something and then she was able to limp herself out, and then she just kind of laid there in the pasture. So, so we're going to have to fence that off. I can get our old fencing. We can just tee into my uncle's lacquer fence setup he's got now. Put them back up on top of the dike so they get a little bit more extra grass. They won't get a hell of a lot, but it's a little bit extra. It won't hurt. We'll probably end up using that same field that we, that we used last year. The one, the, the one next to us. And then if we get permission, I'll probably fence off the ex-mayor's land. We're just going to use a lacquer fence. We're not going to, you know, put T-posts in the ground. A lacquer fence is cheaper. It goes up ten times faster. And that usually never really fails. Um, and the cows usually learn to not touch them after a while. So kind of need to expand out a little bit. We need to get more grass. We need, we need more bales too, but we're not getting enough off our off our damn land worth even doing anything with it. Yeah, you go, buddy. Old school freight liner. Still getting the job done after all these years. Sounds like a straight pipe too. Got a little bit of a growl to her. Yeah. Sounds like a straight pipe. Got a little bit of a bark to it. So, we'll see if we get permission to go into his field or not. I don't think the the young guy will. I mean, he'll probably cut it if we don't put a fence in there quick enough, but we're going to try anyway at some point. Because we're getting more cattle. I'm going to have a hell of a lot more cattle, that's for sure. I'm not going to have probably even the number of my uncle's got. My uncle's got more cows. Obviously, he's got more cows than me. But I want more than him. It's not because I want to be... I want to, you know... How do I word it? I just want more cattle because I, I need. I'm the one that needs to make more money than him because I'm the one that's going to be sinking money into this fucking farm so it's only kind of fair that I have more cattle than him but even at some point too even if we were to expand up onto the dike 
expand into, into those two fields, the field next to us and then the ex-mayor's field. Um, it's, it probably, even right now it would probably be okay, but even in the next few years it's not going to be okay because we're going we're gonna to still need more land yet. But then if it gets to that point, we're going to probably start doing... We're either going to start rotating or we're just going to have to figure something out to where they can start getting down to the river bush and eating down there. Um, but that might be five, ten years down the road because I'm, even I don't have enough cattle. So I don't know why my uncle needs so many damn cattle because he doesn't really put his money to good use. Not like I would. So... Well, yeah, we're gonna have to gonna have to expand it anyway. But the next cows that you know, obviously, as mine, my main cow has calves and whatever. Um, those, if if they're females, those will I'm gonna get them as tame as I possibly can. But I'm only gonna take it so far because uh, I don't want the mother to start freaking out or something. She's already kind of freaking out now. But I can't help it when your child wants to come say hello to me, you know. It's... But and I know that somebody was recommending to get a comb or something and comb them. Um, yeah, we're not going to do that because, I mean, we can. Like I said, it's not going to hurt to do it, but why? These are not show quality cattle. These are cattle to put money in my pocket, to pay off bills, buy stuff, you name it. You know, we're not, these are not show cattle. You know, if we were buying show cattle, this would be the wrong farm to do it on. Because this farm is not suitable to take care of, to keep good looking cattle clean and healthy. You know, there, it's, it's all muddy and stuff, you know, and there's not enough grass and stuff. So, it just wouldn't work out for show cattle. Plus, we're not in the business for show cattle. We're not taking these cattle to the fair or anything stupid like that. We're just not doing that. So it's a waste of time. There's no point. So, <clears throat> and plus, you'd never be able to pet the. You'd never be able to comb the mother anyway because she's fighty. Um, even today, I was trying to get in her pen to put some hay down on the ground because it looked like she got the hay I put down there yesterday all sloppy wet. So I threw a little bit of hay on the ground again, or on the floor. I usually just take the hay that she's got left over in her little feed bin there, um, where I throw the hay into. I'll take whatever's left in there. What's left over, I'll take that out, and then I'll throw it on a wet spot or something. But I was trying to get in there. Of course, the calf wants out, and the mother's, you know, she's getting ready to headbutt me again because she don't want me nowhere near her. I tried patting her, but she just... I don't know. She don't want nothing to do with me. She's not tame. That's the problem. She's a little bit tamer, but she's not going to be able to hop on her back and ride her like a horse because she's not that tame. You know, the bull probably wouldn't mind, but the bull's too small to be riding. <laughs> so, and he's you know he's tame, but he's getting a little bit too tame, I think, too, which could be a good thing, but because. Uh, He's determined to get out of that gate. And I, I keep pushing him back. I used to be able to push him with just one leg, like I would kind of nudge him back a little bit. Now it's taking both of my legs to push him back, and sometimes it even takes both of my hands to push him back. Because uh, he's gotten a little bit bigger. It seems like he's growing three inches every day. Um, still not drinking water yet. As far as I know, he's not. I know he's been checking the water pail out when I throw it in there. He was, he was always kind of looking at it. He keeps sticking his nose in it, but he's not ever, not ever taking nothing for a drink. Because, I mean, it's probably too young to be drinking water. But I figured if he's going to try, he might as well try. It's not going to hurt him. But the mother never usually wants much to do with that second pail, so usually a little calf will play with it for a little bit. <laughs> but other than that, you know, that's pretty much it. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's what's going on there. I'll try to make another cow video tonight because um, I'm going back there at six. 
I don't really go there much at because I well, at the beginning I was going there four to five times a day. I mean I was going there at noon, three o'clock, six o'clock, and then nine o'clock. I still go there at nine o'clock, but I don't really go there at three o'clock anymore. Um, it's just not really necessary because they usually don't really need anything. But I was I, the reason why I was going more often when I first when she first had her cast was to make fucking damn sure that the gate was still closed and it was locked and it wasn't moving because I'm sick and tired of losing bowls. I only, I know I only lost one bowl, but that's five hundred thousand. That's five hundred dollars. You know, and then this bowl is another five hundred dollars. And if I would have lost this bowl, that's a thousand bucks down the drain. You know. But it looks like we're gonna I'm finally gonna have a keeper. Um it ain't dead yet, so it's actually this bowl has actually survived longer than my last my first bowl. So it somehow the first bowl got out of the out of its pen and somehow got outside and disappeared. Well we found it dead, but Never should have gotten out. However, it got out. I don't fucking know. Maybe somebody forgot to lock a gate, or they forgot to make sure there wasn't a gap in the gate, or something. I don't know. But now this this bowl is finally big enough to the point that he he isn't fitting through any cracks. So the mother still seems to try to push on the gate. Somebody's pushing on the gate, trying to open it, but. That's why it's double double chained like that, one on the top, one on the bottom, because somebody pushes on on the bottom and they open it, which is probably could be how the bolt got out. That first one, I don't know, but I was pretty sure that I had locked both of both of them. But it is what it is. There's no point of pouting about the past because the past is already done. So time to move on, and do stuff a little bit better. Still want to get rid of that stupid wooden gate. That thing's a pain in the ass. But to have one trucked in, you're talking almost two hundred dollars. The gate alone is fairly cheap, but um, shipping it via semi or whatever, however the fuck they do it, is uh, quite a bit. I could have one shipped in the tractor supply, which isn't too far away from here. It's just I don't think our pickup would make it, and I don't want to risk driving that piece of shit down the road and something blows up so I'll let her just keep it off the highways I'll let her just pay extra money and have it trucked into my actually to my doorstep then you know if we had a newer pickup it'd be alright like if we had maybe one of these pickups I know they're all Fords but even if it was a newer Ford I wouldn't have a problem with it like you can trust most of these vehicles because they're all very new so um you can trust them Especially the F two fifties. If I had to get a Ford, which I don't really want to get a Ford, if I was to get a Ford, it'd probably be an F two fifty. Just because they're heavy built transmissions. Apparently, Dodge doesn't make heavy transmissions. They're pretty weak. Well, if you pull thirty thousand pounds every day, yeah, your transmissions are gonna get shit no matter what. So, but I like this little red one here. Well, that's not a two fifty though. That's like a I think that's a 150 there. It looks like a 150. Could be a 250. Well, fuck, it's right there. You might as well look at it. There ain't nobody around, I don't think. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I, I'm pretty sure that's an F-150, though. That's got to be a 150. I don't like the black grill. I'd rather have a chrome, but... Yeah, that's a 150. That's what I heard. Yeah, they're all freaking 150s pretty much. There's a 250 in the back. But, silver, try to get it black. How do I get out of here now? I hear it currently. So, yeah, if we had a decently newer freaking rig, or one that was more reliable, you know. Wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. But my grandma says she's not getting any new, any new, any more pickups because she's retired and she don't have the money for a slightly newer one. So 
and she's not going to finance one, obviously, because by the time she got done paying for it, she'd be long gone. And I'd probably be taking over the payments of it, and I'd probably be paying on that until I was 35, 40 years old. Especially if you got a brand new one. So, she could still get a used one. I know the old the old timer got himself a newer, a newer Ford pickup too. It's fine. His his older Ford pickup that he had. He had that one for a lot of years too. I guess it needed way too much work, and he says says it wasn't worth it. wasn't worth investing in the money to fix it. He said it was better off. You're better off taking that money and. Getting himself a getting himself a newer one. So, but he's worked hard all his life, so I think he deserves at least something shiny and new, newer anyway. Usually, everything he's owned has always been used and beat up. So, but you know, it is what it is. But it is what it is, right? So. <clears throat> But anyways, um, they're trying to find some stuff for the, uh, 1586, um, I was having a hard time finding a fuel filter for the 1586. Now, the problem, I don't like, I don't like what Case, or what International did, but they did it. For the fuel filters, and I know AJ would know, because he's got the same tractor as me, just a smaller model. For the fuel filters on those tractors, they, they take two of them. And on the first f fuel filter, and they're all fleet guard, I want a Case IH, but I can't find the correct ones that would fit to a Case IH tractor. Um, I would, somebody would have to tell me what they were, and then I'd have to, you know, obviously order them then. Because I'd order the stick of Case IH shit, but I'm sure it's more money, but whatever but anyways the fuel filter that I was for one of them that I was able to read was an FF 1519 and I think that would be the secondary fuel filter I got it marked as number one but I think it's a secondary and then I think the primary filter which is slightly bigger I believe uh, I couldn't read the numbers it was really hard to read the numbers um, but I managed to read them. I, I didn't get the FF, because that was beyond readable, but I think it was an FF anyway. But the numbers, I was, I don't know how someone able to read the numbers, but it was an FF 5020. Now, someone's going to have to look that up and make sure that's correct, but I know that the 5020 number was correct to what was on that filter, but if it was an FF filter, I don't know. But I was able to read the FF-1519 because that filter is not faded. For some reason, for some reason, the 5020 filter is faded and I can't read it. So I was able to read it a little bit, enough to where I think I got it correct, but someone's going to have to do their homework on this and see if I did this correctly because um, <clears throat> I want to be able to change out those fuel filters sometime this summer. Probably, it'll probably be before winter again. Um, I went on Case IH's website because I just wanted to see what they would sell. They do sell their own filters, their own kind of filters, and then they do sell Fleet Guard filters as well. But they don't have those numbers. They have, I think, which are are possibly newer mo newer filters. They don't sell the 5019 and the 5020. So, and the same thing, and then for the coolant filter, which I have that already, I already obviously I already, I already bought one of those. Um, that's a 50, or no, a 2071. On their website, they only have a 2072. And that does not fit to, as far as I know, it doesn't fit to my style of tractor. It fits to everything else, but not that. So... I don't know. I don't. The only thing I don't know is if the FF5020 filter is correct or not. 
The numbers seem correct, but I don't know if they're an FF or if they're something else. So if anyone knows, if, if anyone knows, maybe if Fleet Guard has a website, I probably could go look that up myself. Um, or if anyone knows about Fleet Guard, let me know if that's the correct filter, because that's well as close as I can find to that would match. Because how do I know that that FF isn't F something else, you know? It's like, I don't know. Because it's not there, it's faded. I could barely even read the freaking 5020 number, you know? <clears throat> and that's another thing that kind of ticks me off too, is that why does the fuel filters, or the fuel system anyway, require two filters, and why do they have to be different sizes? Why can't they just be same filter, and, you know, either just one or two of the same? Why does it have to be a 5019 and a 5020? Why can't they both just be... A 5019 or a 5020. It's like, why do they have to be different? So, but yeah, I'm kind of getting together a little bit of a, um, not so much of a, not so much of a parts list, more of a maintenance, maintenance list, or you know, for oils and stuff. And that, that's another thing too. Um, I'm probably not going to change the engine oil and. Um, the 15 a 6 anytime soon. That's something else I forgot to do, do too, was to get the oil filter freaking numbers. So I'm going to have to probably see if I can do I'll probably do that later when I go back there, but... Um, when it comes time to change the engine oil, I want to run Case IH oil. I don't want to run, like, aftermarket stuff or cheap shit because if you buy the cheap shit you're just gonna you're just asking for trouble then i know you know the guy that i buy my diesel for from he sells oil engine oil if he would actually sell stuff for big tractors like mine i don't know but i know that he sells oil that we buy for the 400 um he but my uncle gets it in the big box because they only sell it in the little um one quart containers or whatever the hell it is. So he gets a big box of those and that usually takes care of the tractor for the year. Um, so, but what I want you guys to do is one, check that 5020 filter, make sure that's, that's a correct filter for me because I'm not 100% sure. AJ maybe you would know or somebody else would know. Whoever knows about these damn tractors. I know a lot about these tractors but then there's a lot of things I still don't know about them I and I'm still learning. So, I got one just because they were easy to run because I've ran one of them all my life, so that's why I got one. And they're just a little bit easier to work on. They they seem harder, they are harder, but at least I don't need a damn computer to fix them. You know, I just need tools. <laughs> Still gotta get more tools too. But what I would like you guys to do, or to anyone that has an idea or or whatever let me know what kind of um, oil case I H sells for my tractor I only want um, if it de well it depends but if they only make I know that they make winter grade oil I know that and I and obviously they make summertime oil but I only want to stick with summertime oil if they don't make an oil that can withstand summer and winter. Now, the stuff that I buy for Big Red and the John Deere are all season oil. I don't even know if, if these old engines can take that kind of oil because this is a newer, these are newer style engines and they're built different from the older stuff. But if they make stuff for the older tractors, you know, like oil that can be ran both winter and summer without any trouble um i know it'll probably cost more money i'm sure it will but i love to run that but if they only make like summertime oil then because that's what's in my 15a6 now i think it's just summertime oil well summertime oil works fine in the winter time and it's a little bit harder on the engines but 
for me, guys, it's not worth it. And I'm not going to change my oil twice a year. It's, it's just stupid to do that. Um, it's not worth it for me to invest in wintertime grade oil when technically we're not running it a lot. We will be running it a little bit more once we do get a loader installed in it, on it. But that's going to be a few more years away probably. So there's no point. I'm going to have more use for it in the summertime than I will in the wintertime because I'm hoping in the summers in the summers I'm hoping to at least put it on the hay rake, rake a little bit of hay um, and then it's going to be used for tillage work because when it does finally come time that we can rip up the big square field you know we're just we're just we're just going to go we're not going to wait so that's why I just want to run straight summertime oil because that's what we're going to... The tractor's going to get more use in the, in the summertime than it will in the wintertime. For right now, anyway, until we get a loader installed. But if I if I could find... If Case IH made this kind of oil that could be ran all seasons, like the Big Red and the John Deere can, their oil is good down to... I think it's good to... Minus 40. I know Big Red's oil is good down to minus 40. It'll start at minus 40, but he's a little grouchy then. But anything above that, he'll start fine. But um, <clears throat> And then the same thing with the John Deere. I think it's down to minus 40, up to like 180-something or whatever the hell it is. Well, we're never going to get 180 degrees here. So huh. if we did, I think things would be catching on fire. <laughs> so... Yeah. But if I could find an all-season oil that I could run year-round, like I can with Big Red, then that's the stuff I would use. But if not, then I'm just going to stick with the summertime oil because that's just... I'm never going to use the damn thing that much in the wintertime anyway. Worth investing in winter-grade winter oil. So the thing I'd like you guys to do is find me or let me know what kind of Case IH oil that they make for um, my kind of tractor. Because I know all the newer tractors, they run the more fancier oils, and I don't know what these older ones can run. I don't know if these older tractors can run the newer stuff. I don't really see why not, but maybe the in older engines are not designed for it. Uh, I don't know. Someone has to let me know, because I'm not an engine expert either, so... I mean, I'm not going to put it in there and risk blowing something up, so let me know what kind of engine oil um, I can buy from Case H that will fit in that 1586. Um, give me the the brand or the, like what kind it is, and then if it's got like an item number, um, let me know. So... Now I'm sure it's going to take probably quite a few gallons to, to fill that engine. So I'll probably need to get at least one or two gallons. I don't know, I'll probably take more than that. I'm probably going to have to buy at least one five-gallon pail of the shit. And probably a couple small ones if I need to. I don't, I don't know how much that engine oil... How much oil that engine holds, but I know I think I can look it up in the book and it, and it would tell me there. But... I don't know if they would tell me what kind of oil I can run or not, but if there's anything better out there than what maybe I find in the book, if I do find anything in the book, let me know. But I'd like somebody to look that up, this filter anyway, this FF5020 filter, let me know if that's actually correct, if it's actually F, uh, FF. Because I can, that's all I can read is the 5020, I can't read if it's an FF or an EF or or a WF or whatever. I don't know. I can read everything else. I was able to read the coolant filter. I got that, so I'm good. And I have the, uh, I, I think this would be the secondary fuel filter, which is an FF5019. And then the next one is a 5020, which I, I'm guessing is still an FF. That's the only thing I don't know for sure. But if it is correct, let me know. So then that way I can um, 
I can, make, I can make sure that I order the right one then when the time does come to order these. Um, don't like the fact that it takes two fill filters. I think that's stupid, but that's the way it was done. Uh, I think they even they I think they still even do that to this day. Even they put two filters on. But a big engine probably requires a lot of diesel fuel, so it's probably a, a good thing they do that. But whatever. As long as I got my part number, item numbers correct, I'm all right with it. I'd rather get Case IH filters, but whatever. Um, yeah, I don't even know if Fleet Guard is even still making these filters. I think they're making up. They might be changing their numbers now. I don't know. I'm gonna have to see if I can find their damn website. See if they even have a damn website. Um, I don't know. They're all look anyway. But let me know if that 5020 filter is correct. I got FF5020 written down here, but I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Kind of has to be, I would think, because the next size down is a 5019. 50, and then I got a 2071 for a coolant filter. Um, and I think that the other thing I would need would be a hydraulic filter for the 1586. That I don't have as of yet because I don't know what kind of fleet guard filter would fit in there. So if anyone knows that too, let me know. Um, all this stuff. Well, the filters, anyways. If I can't get the Case IH brands, I'm probably just going to stick with Fleet Guard, which, which Case IH sells them anyway. Um, give me the part number, the item number, of the Fleet Guard hydraulic filter, and then I'll write that down in there too. If if I don't find it, I probably doubt I'll find it. But um, since since there's a lot of people out there that seem to know more about filters than me. Uh, might as well just see if they know anything. If this, they would help me out, because if I had to try to figure this out, I'd probably be wasting a couple of years trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, as of right now, all I got for filters is the coolant, which I already have. I ha I'm going to be ordering the 5019 sometime, and the 5020 is a. It's got the big question mark on it because I'm not sure if that's 100% correct or not. And then I need a Fleet Guard hydraulic filter. That's another thing I'm going to probably need too, besides the engine oil, what kind of engine oil they run. I probably need to know what kind of hydraulic oil they run as well. I'm not changing any of that out, but I'll either have this stuff written down so then when the time does come to change all this shit, I can just simply call up Case IH, tell them what I want, and order it and be done with it. And I don't have to, you know, screw around. So, if you guys can give me a hand on that, let me know which. What kind of engine oil I should run and what kind of hydraulic oil I should run. It's all going to be Case IH stuff. Yes, I know it's probably going to cost more money. But I, I just feel like you're buying a better product when you spend more money. I know black people are, are like, oh, say you can buy the cheaper stuff, save a little bit of money. The problem is when you do that kind of stuff, you don't know if it's a good product. You know. I mean, yes, I'm sure all companies make I for John Deere and Case IH I think they make their own shit, you know, for hydraulic oil and engine oils. I don't think it gets made by anybody else. The filters on the other hand are a different subject. I'm, a lot of people say that that John Deere just buys them from other other major companies and they just relogo them with their own logo. Could be true, possibly could be true. I'm not gonna argue with you guys about it. But the, the filter, yeah, they're all kind of the same, so they're going to do the same thing, but the main thing is the oil, and the hydraulic oil. you got to run the good stuff. I bet you 10 to 1, see, with the Polaris and the John Deere, I run Polaris oil and John Deere oil. I could easily get the rest of my life out of those machines with proper care, and... You know, just taking good care of them and running good stuff. If you run the cheap stuff at like the hardware, you know, different story. You know, that stuff's a little bit junkier. Now, I will say this one thing. Okay, there's only one machine in my whole entire operation that I do buy cheap oil. I don't buy John Deere oil or Players oil or, in this case, Husky oil. 
If Husky even makes their own oil, I don't know. I buy cheap shit for this stuff. Um, well, it's not so much the engine's fault. It's just because it's not reliable. <laughs> so I buy the, I buy the cheap stuff at the harbor for this thing because I don't care about it. It's just I still gotta try to fix that. Try to get a new tranny put in it sometime this year. So my grandma can garden. Two hundred and fifty dollars gonna go right down the damn drain, boys. Getting it here won't be a problem. It's putting it back together is gonna be a bitch because because I, I took this apart like two years ago and. I'm not sure if I remember how to put it back together now or not, but you know, I need to figure it out. If anybody around here wants to help me put this thing back together, come on by. If you're looking for something to do and you're bored out of your fucking mind like I am all the time, <laughs> here, we'll do this together then. You know? With two people, I only should have it together in less than a day. I would think. I still, I should still have all the freaking bolts, because I haven't moved anything since I put it there. Um... Yeah. Would like some new belts, but whatever, screw it. But yeah, so if you guys could tell me about that filter, let me know. Um, give me the Fleet Guard hydraulic filter number two so I can find that on eBay. All this stuff right here for filters, I'm going to order on eBay unless Case H, Case H would be willing to order for me, which if they do that, eh, I'll roll with it then. But for now, I'm just going to order it on eBay. Um, but when it comes to the engine oil and the hydraulic oil, that's for sure going to be coming from KSH. It's not going to be coming from online. It's not going to be coming from around here. Um, because I just want the good stuff. I'm not, I'm not paying for cheap shit anymore. That's, you buy cheap shit, you just get in more trouble with it. I, to me anyway, that's what it seems like. So, maybe you guys don't have a problem running the cheap stuff. To me, guys, it's just a personal thing, you know? It's just, I feel happier and more comfortable running with what I know will work instead of running something that's probably made in China and probably no good. Okay? I don't like Chinese shit. I, you guys know that by now. I hate China shit. Yeah, I own a lot of Chinese crap, but you can't help it because everything's made in fucking China. There's hardly anything made in the U.S. Any, anymore. As far as I know, the only thing that I have that's truly made in America is my vice. This has got to be from the 1900s. This was truly made in America. You know, because back then we didn't really have much to do with China. So now, ooh, everything's in fucking China. You know, it's like, holy shit. So... As far as I know, this is the only thing I have that's truly made in America. Right here. So, maybe maybe I got a few tools. I don't know, maybe these tools are made in the U.S. I don't know, but... As, as far as I know, the good old vice that, that, I, that I have that's truly made in America. And I know that. How do I know that? Because it says made in the U.S.A. on it. So... Right, right here. Made in U.S.A. Damn right. So, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, guys, I'm going to take off. If you guys want to help me on that little puzzle, let me know. Um, give me some part numbers, item numbers, whatever the hell they call it, and uh, I'll start getting a list put together, and maybe the tractor will get some love. I haven't changed the coolant filter yet on it. I'm probably going to wait until it gets... And once the snow's gone completely, then I know it'll be warm out. So that's probably when I'll do it. Or I'll probably just wait until it's time to do everything. Like the engine oil and the filters, but that could be another couple of years yet. But Whatever. It, it's good to keep a stockpile going. I want to actually get a little... I'm actually going to... At the farm, anyway. Uh, there's a building I want to clean out because it's full of junk. I'm not going to say what building it's, it's going to be. Because I don't want somebody robbing my parts. But it's, it's a small building that's still decent at the farm. I'm thinking that one I'm probably going to turn into my parts building. Because the roof don't leak. It's got a good solid door on it. And I can put some locks on it and stuff. And now that's where I'm going to actually start putting a lot of my parts for my tractor. And instead of putting them in my house and I'm running out of room. So, But that's just going to be for the tractor. And for whatever attachments I need, to, I should get for it later on. Um, until we get a bigger Quonset or a shop or something built, then I'll 
switch it, but I could do it to this shop. I could get rid of all the shit and put some shelves and put my parts on there. But I'd rather have it over there where it's closer to the tractor because the tractor's not here that often. The tractor hasn't been here all winter and part most of the summer. It was only here, I think, one day out of the whole year. And that's when I washed it, so... I never waxed it, but I did, did wash it, so... But yeah, so I do apologize for this long video. Um, let me know, guys, if you have any ideas of what I can do. And if that filter's correct, I, it's gotta be, but... Maybe I'll see if I can find their website. Maybe that would help. If I can't find it, maybe somebody else will find it for me. Who knows? That's... I have the worst luck trying to find websites that, that I need, so, <laughs> you know how things go, so. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to take off, so I guess uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff, so yeah. Thanks for watching guys, take it easy.